everybody, and thanks for joining today. I've been excited about the opportunity to talk to you on Zoom and talk to you also about my Lean and Luscious offerings. You know there are three books now, and I want to talk to you about number one, it's called Lean and Luscious. Of course, number two is called Lean and Luscious. Also, that's meatless. And then we have a third one, which is more Lean and Luscious, and that's Mediterranean. So I want you to know that we really are very, very clear that we want you to know and love the name Lean and Luscious. But today I want to talk to you about the first book, Lean and Luscious. And you might notice also, and I have a picture of it here, uh, I have uh, five very good looking grandchildren on there. And when we decided to put my grandchildren on the front cover, Someone said, well, do they eat the things in the book? And I have to tell you that they do. And I have a bunch of grandchildren who are very eclectic and they're willing to try new things. So I have had some real testing and tasting opportunities with them. And I'm excited about the fact that uh, they are very much a part of my life. Of course, when I show you the picture of how they look on this book, I have to tell you that the boys now hold, have beards and of course uh, the girls are very grown up and uh, the young one is uh, at least a head and a half taller than me. So we can't stop that from happening because that's exactly what's supposed to happen. I feel like I'm connecting with so many of you after a lifetime of uh, actually more than 44 years here in West Virginia having the privilege to be the franchise owner of Weight Watchers of West Virginia, and also in many respects, your leader in various meetings that I can, conducted. And I will tell you that it's almost seven years since I made the decision to sell the franchise. And I must tell you that those were wonderful years. And I hope I was able to add to your life and help you make changes in your eating style. And that pretty much was the original inspiration for creating the Lean and Luscious cookbook series. I know that everybody wants to be healthy and everybody wants to take care of themselves. But the bigger question is, how do we do that? What changes do we make? What do I buy in the grocery store? Where do I shop? You know, in this particular time of my sharing with you today, and we're looking at May 3rd, we could, we could not have scripted that we would be in the middle of a pandemic and uh, not able to have the freedoms that we're so used to. But when we do go to the grocery store, and of course now you can order on your click list, which is done not just for Kroger's, but it's done for Walmart and all these. There are so many different places that offer that. We need to know what to order and we want to be able to have lots of fruits and vegetables on hand. And most important of all, we don't want to buy so many foods that are pre-prepared in terms of breadings and sauces and things that are not in keeping with good health. With our being um, locked up, I guess is the word that occurs to my head, although we're not locked up, so to speak, but staying home and quarantining ourselves for safety so that we don't have any problems with COVID-19, we must remember that eating wrong is, in a word, wrong, and eating right has many, many benefits. And that's why I want to encourage you to, whether you're able to go to the store or someone in your family is able to do the shopping for you, or you're ordering through one of the convenience services, please make sure that you have plenty of fruits and vegetables, and I mean lots of vegetables. Just carrots and just celery are usually ingredients and other things. I'm talking about spinach and kale and cucumbers and tomatoes and lettuces of all types. And every kind of vegetable that is available in the market 
please make it something that is on your list. You know, when I talk about lean and luscious, I want to tell you that I have several recipes that are my very most favorites. But you know the book, and um, it's right on the front cover, uh, we have 375 recipes in this book, and it contains meat, fish, poultry. We also have many recipes in the first Lean and Luscious that are vegetarian, and I presume you know a little bit about vegetarian eating, but if you don't, a vegetarian doesn't just have uh, vegetables, they also, if they're lacto-ovo, then, and what that means very simply, is that that person who is a vegetarian will eat eggs and will use cheese. And then there are other vegetarians who are vegan and they don't use any food product that had any life to it before it became an edible item. You know, there's a cute way of saying it, and a vegan doesn't eat anything that ever had a mother. But what I want to tell you is that all these lifestyles are worthy of being respected. And in the Lean and Luscious cookbook series, we try to address everybody and where they're coming from. So I want to kind of tell you a, a story, and I hope that you're going to be able to get your hands on Lean and Luscious. And on page 18, I have an unbelievably delicious creamy potato soup. And oh, I would say a couple of years ago, I was doing a tasting and a book signing for uh, Taylor Books, which is on Capitol Street in Charleston, West Virginia. So there was a pretty large crowd and there was a gentleman who came, came over and asked me for a sample. Well, I was happy to give him a sample. And he just looked at me and smiled and he said, oh, this is good. And about 15 minutes later, he came back and he asked for uh, another sample. And of course, I was very happy to give it to him. That simply meant he liked it the first time. And then, uh, I don't know, another 15 minutes went by. He came back and he asked for a third sample. And um, I guess if I had thought about that, I would have brought a bowl so I could have given him a bowl of soup. And then he came back yet 20 minutes later and he asked for a fourth sample. And I was very entertained. I thought it was particularly funny. And then he walked over to me and he had his index finger up in the air. And he said to me, shame on you. He said, you can't call this recipe lean and luscious. I said, why not? He said, you put real cream in this recipe. Well, I said, thank you for the compliment. And of course I opened up the book to page 18 and there was no cream in the recipe. What makes it creamy and delicious is evaporated skim milk. And so after his jaw dropped down onto his chest, he said, bravo, this is the best creamy potato soup I have ever had. So it was a fun time. It was a story that I've never forgotten. And I wanna tell you that if you will go to the book and make this recipe for your family, for your friends, for yourself, you will absolutely love it. I have friends out of state that I've shared it with, and I've actually taken the book with me to their house and cooked there, and they were very pleased, and uh, lots of smiles, and so I want to encourage you to try this recipe. You know, these times of quarantine and being at home, cooking is a great thing to do. But you know where I have always come from since I learned how to take care of my weight and take care of my health is that you can never make a better investment than in taking care of yourself. Now we're talking about people who have various and different maladies, but eating right is something that you want to do as honoring yourself and giving yourself a very special gift. You know, over the years since Kathy and Headline Books uh, joined my life, 
I've enjoyed traveling and meeting so many of you. But of course, for now, we have to use the power of technology and enjoy Zoom. And now we're talking about uh, this wonderful creamy potato soup, but now I wanna tell you about page 51. There is a recipe called Italian eggplant and cheese casserole. Well, I've actually knocked them out with this one. Uh, as a member of the Jewish community, uh, we had an opportunity to do a big uh, 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 evening meal on a Friday night, and uh, it involved both uh, Temple Israel in Charleston and B'nai Jacob Synagogue. And I did the uh, recipe on, as I told you, page 51. And uh, from what I could see, because we ran out of food, they were licking their fingers, and I was getting great, great praise. And one of the things that you'll see about my Italian eggplant and cheese casserole, it's just a very nice way of making eggplant parmesan in a healthy way. You know, think about this. How many times we've gone into an Italian restaurant and we order eggplant parmesan, and when you eat it, of course, it's piled up and it's got lots of sauce and the eggplant and the cheese has already been fried. And I know your mouth is probably watering, so please wipe your, the sides of your mouth while, we're, while I'm going through this. But you never really get to taste the eggplant because it's already been fried up. And that's why in this particular recipe, we like to broil the eggplant slices and then follow the easy directions on this. And I promise you, if you make this for yourself, whomever with whomever you share your life, it will not be the last time you make it. It'll be the time and you will be requested to make this many, many, many opportunities for an encore. It's just that good. So I really want to tell you that it's something worth your time, worth your energy. You know, when I have the opportunity to go to uh, shows with headline books, I like to give out uh, recipe cards. And one of the recipe cards that I give out is another favorite recipe and it's on my page 83 in the Lean and Luscious cookbook, and it's called Honey Crunch Chicken. Well, some people say to me, I don't cook. And I always say to them, well, do you eat? And they said, well, of course I eat. But I wanna tell you that one of the things I take a great deal of pride in with my Lean and Luscious cookbooks is the recipes are easy. You know, over the years as a working woman and then a working wife and a working mother, I had to make meals that weren't terribly complicated. I would choose a recipe the night before or sometimes on the weekend, make sure that I had the ingredients in the house. And you know, there are a lot of staples that you'll buy but you'll only buy them a couple of times a year and you'll be able to reuse them frequently. Now it's the vegetables that you have to buy with a little bit more frequency, of course, but the whole idea is to make your life easier and make the meals delicious and make them healthy and make them things that your family wants to enjoy many, many times. So this honey crunch chicken has four ingredients. So I'm going to do it on my hand. One, two, three, four only ingredients. And those four ingredients are boneless, skinless chicken breast, two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of reduced calorie mayonnaise, one and a half ounces of grape nut cereal. And you say, wait a minute, grape nut cereal, I'm not having breakfast. Well, just listen up, plus one tablespoon and one teaspoon of honey. And what you do with this recipe is you simply take the lighter version of the mayo 
and you paint the chicken pieces and you then drizzle a little bit of honey and then you sprinkle your grape nuts and then you bake it in the oven at 375 for 45 minutes uncovered and I promise you you will offer something to yourself with whomever you share your life maybe grandchildren maybe a caregiver maybe your mother and they will absolutely love it it goes great with a salad it goes great with rice it goes great with any side dish that you want to create and of course i hope you'll find that to go with recipe from my book because remember as i told you there's 375 recipes to choose from we haven't even talked about desserts and we haven't talked about some of the greatest things you can get into i wanted to focus this time with you today primarily on the meals themselves but this honey crunch chicken is also on one of those cards that i give out and uh, when i tell people that it's just four ingredients anybody can do it you can practically do it blindfolded well maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration but you can do it and it's something that's different delicious fun and i think everybody will be thrilled with it and that's something that i want to just encourage you to try uh by the way time out because i have to tell you i'm wearing my lean and luscious t-shirt and uh i'm very proud of it so uh that was just a little uh little opportunity to just go on to another recipe and the next one is macaroni with cheddar and tomatoes so there was an opportunity uh during the winter a few years back to get involved in an, in a, an outdoor cooking event at our uh, capital market and uh it was a mac and cheese cook-off well i wanted to be in it but of course I knew that I was only going to represent lean and luscious. I wasn't gonna make mac and cheese any old way. And you know, there are many, many, many people who have their grandmother's version of mac and cheese and their mother's version of mac and cheese. And they put lots of butter and lots of cheese and lots of, they're not even using milk, they're using cream because they wanna make sure that if you're in a competition, everybody's tastes a little bit better than somebody else's. So I chose, my lean and luscious recipe macaroni with cheddar and tomatoes and once i put it out my goodness i had people coming back for seconds and thirds and i'd love to tell you that i was the number one outstanding winner but that would be a lie i will tell you that at the end of that afternoon we got honorable mention for our macaroni and cheddar with tomatoes. So that was pretty exciting for me. You know, there's so many recipes to talk about and you know they'll, they're available. You can go to my website, leanandluscious.com and buy them and just indicate that you would like me to sign it for you and that will be my privilege and then we'll send it out to you and of course you'll be able to take care of uh, you know all the to do's as far as getting it put into the mail uh, whether we do it with the united states post postal service or we do it with ups it'll be a privilege to send you uh our, our book so i want to also tell you that um if you haven't visited our shape shop uh, we have relocated uh, to 706 Central Avenue. And through this pandemic, uh, we have been opened, but we've had shortened hours starting at 10 a.m. and closing at 3.30 in the afternoon. And what we've done to continue to accommodate the general public is uh, we accept phone calls and people give us their order. And then when they pull up in front of our shop, they call us a second time and then we walk it out uh, to them. So we're very proud and very pleased to be doing curbside service. We have had customers walk into our shop and pick out things from our freezer. 
and that works well too. So we are maintaining uh, strictest um, care. We're wearing face mask, masks, we're wearing gloves. And of course, when anyone comes in, we're sanitizing when they leave because we don't want to take any kind of chances. But Shape Shop is alive and well. And if you're not familiar with Charleston's West Side, you know, the West Side is a, a very unique part of Charleston. Our Central Avenue begins at the beginning of Five Corners and it ends at Florida Street. So it's kind of locked right in the middle, but it's easy to find. It's in the same block as an AEP substation. And there is a beauty shop that uh, is in the same block we are. I think the beauty shop is probably older than I am, and that's really saying something. So it's easy to find us, and it's very easy to get in and out of our, our shop. So there's no parking meters. You know, um, after I sold Weight Watchers in 2013, I uh, couldn't do anything in the weight loss industry for a period of three years. And in the meantime, I put myself on the Mediterranean diet. And I have to tell you that I fell in love. Well, subsequent to uh, going on the Mediterranean lifestyle and loving everything that I ate, I must uh, admit that um, I realized how much I missed doing Weight Watchers and having that interaction every week with my members. And I think they missed me as well. And so I opened my own group and it's called Fix It With Foods. And right now we're doing our meetings virtually and we'd love you to join us. Just get in touch with us, fixitwithfoods.com and you'll be able to join us Tuesday morning by way of Zoom, which is unbelievably great. I'm just so impressed with it. I mean, people are having business meetings all around the world because of Zoom. So it's Fix It With Foods. It's the Mediterranean way of life. And it was also the inspiration for book number three, which we're gonna talk about in a couple of weeks. It's uh, more lean and luscious, Mediterranean. And the beautiful thing about Mediterranean, just for a little bit of background, is the fact that Mediterranean eating is with clean ingredients, nothing is processed. And so in that part of the world, people don't have ginormous freezers and refrigerators, so they have to go to the market frequently. Right now, things are different because this pandemic is covering the globe. But when we have the opportunity to be able to go shopping and get everything fresh, which we can do right now, let me also assure you that Mediterranean eating does not include anything weird or exotic or hard to find. It's about fresh. And it's about olive oil, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. You know, for years over the time of our life that we've dieted, quote, unquote, we've worried about potatoes and we've worried about bread. And you know, if you use good bread and you enjoy a potato, you might think, oh my God, I don't think I'm hearing this correctly, but you could have a slice of bread and a potato at the same meal. We eat fish approximately twice a week. And of course we do beans and we do cheese and we do eggs and we do everything that's fresh. And the Mediterranean lifestyle has a listing of vegetables that will really introduce you to some new eating. But when you really get involved with Mediterranean eating, the list of recipes is endless. And in my Mediterranean cookbook, there are 365 recipes. And every one of them is a complement to the Mediterranean lifestyle. So we have much to share. I'm also wanting to talk a little bit about my meatless cookbook. You know, for the vegetarian, 
again, as a reminder, there are two types. There's the vegetarian who eats eggs and cheese. And then there's the vegetarian who is called a vegan. And they don't use anything that was ever alive. So in the meatless book, oh my goodness, we have recipes that are incredible. Beyond explanation, but when you buy the book and put some of these recipes together, it's going to make a huge difference in your eating repertoire. You know, I said earlier about being a working mother, I didn't want to have to come home and dirty four pots and three or four mixing bowls just to have dinner. And one of the things that I take pride in is making meals as easy as possible and clean up even easier. So I want to encourage you to really and truly get into these books. By the way, if you are a dessert eater, oh, each book has some incredible desserts. And desserts are not something you have to be ashamed of because none of us should be. We want to be able to know how to put them together. You know, there is a, a, a new sweetener that all of us are beginning to experience, and that is stevia. And one of the nice things about stevia is it is not a chemical. It actually grows in, in uh, tropical climates. And then the extract from that is made into a zero calorie sweetener. And it is just delicious. In fact, we use it in many of our recipes at Shape Shop. And when you eat them, you can't tell the difference. So we're excited about that. And I also hope that you are buying your Dippy Doos. Uh, we uh, sell our Dippy Doos, which is a handmade ice cream. Uh, we sell it at 18 different Kroger stores. We also have our Dippy Doos available at our Shape Shop. And many people have been coming in and stocking up, making sure that they have them on hand. Uh, there's uh, 17 different flavors. Some are dipped in peanut butter, some are dipped in chocolate, some are dipped in butterscotch. And uh, of course the uh, topping does have a little bit of sugar, but uh, it's all very modest and it's very reasonable. So I'm also working on a children's cookbook. You know, it's my belief that children need to have that experience early on and they need not be afraid to be in the kitchen and not just make a mess, but have some gentle instructions. And I think that once, uh, gosh, we get further along in the pandemic and we understand more about safety, I'm sure that uh, Headline Books is going to be able to get that book together and available. Uh, children need to not uh, feel like they have 10 thumbs when they go into the kitchen. It really shouldn't be anybody else's responsibility to make sure that they eat. You know, it could be a, a caregiver uh, who's watching the children. I guess that's called a babysitter. And of course, if a child is comfortable in the kitchen and they're taught how to use a knife and they're taught how to measure ingredients, the recipes that we selected for our children's book it's about 50, 55 recipes, all easy, simple, and we want to tell you that we're excited about the availability of that in the not too distant future. So I want to tell you how thrilled I am that um, you uh, have taken this time today to uh, come up to spend time with me on Zoom. And uh, I would be happy to answer any questions, anything you would like to know about the cookbooks, the shape shop, fix it with foods. I am all yours and happy to answer all of your questions. Uh, the inspiration for creating the cookbooks um, has simply been people need to know. And, you know, a lot of people say to me, uh, if I bring another cookbook into the house, my husband's going to kill me. A lot of people have recipe cookbooks. My goodness, their shelves are lined with them. 
but they don't use those recipes simply because if you look at them, there's too many steps, there's too many pots and pans, there's too many ingredients, and frankly, we just don't have all that time. So with that thought in mind, I tried to make the Lean and Luscious cookbook series as easy as possible using readily available ingredients and making the how-to easy for you to learn. And, you know, I highlighted this afternoon four recipes, but that's four out of 375. So I want you to go into the books and visit the desserts and visit the, uh, the appetizers. And you know, something that I forgot to tell you, uh, some years back, and we'd have to go back to the 80s, when uh, I got the inspiration to do Lean and Luscious, uh, I sold them, and this is before West Virginia, uh, I sold them at a bookstore in uh, the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. By the way, I was born in Baltimore, but now that I live in West Virginia for uh, 51 years, I believe I'm a mountaineer through and through. But back in the day, uh, I sold some of the books at a bookstore called Books for Cooks. Well, some months later, I was at a book selling event. Many of those that I have done with Kathy Teets, Headline Books, and a man approached me and he said, um, so this is your cookbook, Lean and Luscious. I said, yes, it is. He said, well, let me tell you a story. He said, uh, I bought the book when I was here in Baltimore and I took it home with me. I live in Rockland, California. He said, and I was so intrigued by the way the book, book was put together. He said, I decided to make a meal using uh, everything in your book from soup to nuts. And I know that's just a very basic instruction. He said, and then I invited seven friends in for dinner. He said, and I had such praise and such rave reviews from my friends. He said to me, instead of being a regional celebrity, how would you like to be a national celebrity? Well, I said to him, wait a minute, let me think about that. <laughs> and actually, this is a little crazy. Um, he had um, a publishing company, and this is, of course, before Headline Books. And uh, he also had a large distribution company, and Lean and Luscious has been out and about for a very long time. Now, what I want to tell you is the Lean and Luscious book, and it was just one then, and then there became a uh, more Lean and Luscious, <clears throat> and then the Meatless, and then there was a uh, Lean and Luscious Favorites. What made all of that happen is simply because people were so thrilled to be eating easy, healthy recipes and that they were so outstandingly delicious. And they were distributed by a very large distribution company. Of course, bookstores have changed, and now we can buy them on websites uh, all around the world. And so it's a little bit different. But you know, the books that started out in the 80s have been redone because nutritional standards have changed. And in the current books, Lean and Luscious, Lean and Luscious Meatless, More Lean and Luscious Mediterranean, I am thrilled to tell you that every book has gone through a complete remake to meet with our current healthy dietary guidelines. And each one of our recipes also has nutritional content so if you are someone who counts points, if you are someone who is dealing with diabetes, the content, the step-by-step -step is listed at the bottom of each recipe. And I want you to know all that I have to share. The recipes are current as far as nutrition. The nutrition information is available and I am very, very excited to be offering you 
a wonderful collection of recipes that I know are going to become favorites. And of course, if you make something for a friend or you tell a friend about it, I would be happy for you to tell them the name of the book that you got it from. And I hope that means that you will acquire all three. But of course, I have to be a realist and tell you that I know you're not going to buy three at one time, although I think that would be a very nice idea. You got to start with one. Lean and Luscious, that's number one. Lean and Luscious Meatless, that's number two. And now we have more Lean and Luscious Mediterranean. And in the not too distant future, we're going to be able to have our Lean and Luscious Children's Cookbook. So this has been a great opportunity for me to spend Sunday afternoon with you. Thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.